This video is about the Tomkai Creek Watershed Project, a true restoration success story in the making. Responding to community concerns, private landowners and government agencies work together to ensure good water quality, to protect the environment for fish and wildlife, and to preserve the value of the land. The purpose of this video is to describe the history of the Tomkai Project, to show causes and effects of erosion, and to demonstrate the results of the methods used to stabilize or restore the watershed. We hope that you will be inspired to participate in similar environmental restoration projects. The 40,638-acre Tomkai Creek watershed is located in Northern California in Mendocino County, just east of the city of Willits. 202 private landowners own 90% of the watershed. A watershed, or drainage area, is the land that water flows across or under on its way to a stream, river, or lake. Every watershed contains smaller watersheds, or sub-basins, and drains into a larger watershed. The Tomkai watershed is a tributary to the Eel River and has been an important spawning habitat for Chinook salmon and steelhead trout. Historical Chinook salmon runs were estimated to be 10,000 to 15,000 fish. Recent runs range from a low of 367 to a high of 2,410. The suggested causes of the decline are high water temperatures, few deep pools, difficult access in some areas, and sediment in spawning beds. These changes in stream conditions are caused by common forms of soil erosion. One of these is gully erosion. The break in the slope at the top of the gully is called a head cut. The small waterfall flowing over the head cut will cause further soil erosion and allow the gully to expand upstream. The steep bare sides of this stream illustrate downcutting, which often results from the loss of the vegetation which normally grows along the banks of the stream. This channel, which once contained deep pools, has become choked with sediment, causing it to become wide and shallow. Channel widening and loss of depth have contributed to the decline in fish population. Erosion, the wearing away of soil by wind and water, is the result of a natural process known as the hydrologic cycle. Water vapor in the air condenses and falls to earth where it flows across or under the soil to a stream, river, or lake. In a healthy watershed, the water is absorbed by the plants in the soil and slowly released to stream channels. This slow release evens out the stream flow and prevents rapid erosion. When there are no leaves and branches or grasses to absorb or slow the flow of water, the streams flood and cut away their banks. By 1980, many of the landowners in the Tomkai drainage realized that they had an unhealthy watershed caused by several historical impacts. Major flooding occurred in 1955 and 1964 that had a significant impact on stream characteristics. The force of the rapidly moving floodwaters cut into stream banks and washed away the native plants, leaving the soil unprotected. Until the mid-1960s, owners burned extensively to increase grazing areas in an attempt to convert brush to grassland. Extensive logging or clear-cutting in the 1950s, prior to the passage of the California Forest Practices Act, removed most of the marketable timber. This practice, along with the associated road construction and hauling operations, denuded as much as 50% of the watershed. Finally, as subdivision and land sales occurred, individual average parcel sizes decreased. Additional low standard unsurfaced roads for access to the new parcels were created that added to the erosion problems. The creek, which was originally just a 10 foot wide, two feet deep affair had gotten to the point where in many places it was 50 and 60 feet across and the downcutting had come 
down to a point 15 feet below it where it was. I remember so well one time walking with my son Steve uh, along the banks. It, this would have been in the 70s sometime. And he looked at me and he said, Dad, what are we going to do? And like dads like to be able to tell their sons what, they, what needs to be done, I said, Steve, I, I just can't uh, figure out how, with our resources, how we can uh, correct all this. In response to growing concern for the watershed, the Mendocino County Resource Conservation District obtained from the Environmental Protection Agency and the State Water Resources Control Board a $182,000 water quality planning grant. The Resource Conservation District used this money to develop a 250-page plan for restoring the watershed and set a goal of restoring the population of spawning salmon and steelhead to at least 50% of the historical levels. The report included a detailed erosion inventory, identified treatment costs, and presented a strategy for implementing a watershed conservation treatment program. Natural Resource Conservation Service personnel walked along the main Tomkai and each of the feeder streams, noting downcutting, bank instability, head cuts, landslides, and other problems. For each problem area, a corrective measure was proposed and the cost calculated. So then the big question is, well, obviously what they had recommended is going to take a lot of money. And what occurred next was that they and some of the landowners uh, put up uh, some money to get the first projects started. Because runoff increases as it flows downstream, a key element of the plan was to start work near the headwaters of the watershed and proceed downstream. Otherwise, after a major storm, uncontrolled runoff from further upstream might wash out work already completed. There were other agencies that came along and uh, uh, put quite a bit of money into the uh, various projects. Based upon the completed plan, the Mendocino County Resource Conservation District obtained funds from the California Department of Fish and Game, the Environmental Protection Agency, and the State Water Resources Control Board. Between 1982 and 1991, almost a million dollars in implementation funding from agencies and landowners was obtained and applied to the projects in the Tomkai watershed. Although a million dollars is a lot of money, the Natural Resources Conservation Service estimated that the increase in fish population alone would be worth over three million dollars. Now let's take a look at some of the restoration methods used in implementing the plan. All of the methods shown here are known as best management practices or BMPs. It should be noted that a BMP is chosen for a particular site which does the job and is economically feasible. The first few are for controlling head cuts up near the top of the Tomkai drainage. They are gabions, revegetation, and concrete pillows. Gabions are wire net cages filled with rock placed near a head cut. These act as mini dams and slow water movement. As the flow of water slows, suspended sediment is deposited behind the gabion, cementing it in place and stopping the head cut. Another way to stop head cutting is the planting of willows on the stream bank. Willow roots help the stream to narrow and deepen by providing additional structural support for the soil. The shade they provide keeps the water temperature cool, important for healthy fish. Using concrete pillow is another method for stabilizing head cuts. Several layers of fabric are sewn together and placed over a down cutting area and concrete is then blown into the pockets of fabric where it hardens. This hardened concrete pillow forms a barrier to prevent further erosion. It's most effective when used with revegetation. Let's look at three more restoration methods. Exclusion fencing, concrete log dams, and riprap. Each is used for different types of erosion problems. 
It is often necessary to build fences on a temporary basis to exclude livestock or wildlife from trampling and eating the streamside or riparian vegetation. The fences will allow the natural vegetation to reestablish and also to give the planted alders and willows a head start. When downcutting is severe, such as more than 20 feet in 30 years, specialized engineering is sometimes needed. An example of this engineering is the use of interlocking concrete logs to form a check dam. After these artificial logs have been placed into the stream bed, they are linked together with reinforcing bars, which are grouted in place to make a solid structure. Finally, the new dam is backfilled with dirt and protected with large rocks. Check dams are designed to have a spillway that directs water into a specific spot forming a plunge pool that gives spawning fish a place to rest traveling upstream and a place for young fry to hide during their downstream migration. A notch formed in the center of the spillway ensures a steady flow for downstream migrants even during low rainfall years. As you can see, several designs made of various materials were used on the restoration project. Because spawning fish have limited ability to jump when swimming upstream, all of the different types of check dams used in the Tomkai are only a few feet high. When a stream goes around a curve, the energy of the moving water strikes the stream bank. The result may be a widening of the channel and a loss of overall depth. Rock riprap is large diameter rock placed so that it will dissipate the kinetic energy of the water flowing along a stream bank. In severe situations, a channel may have become so wide that reshaping it is necessary. The first step is to dig a trench that will mark the new bank where the riprap is positioned. The trench is dug deep enough to securely hold the rock in place. Digging down until water is found helps with the establishment of willow cuttings which are placed in the bottom of the trench. Willows sprout and quickly send roots down into moist soil. Next, the riprap is loaded and put in place with a front end loader on top of the willow cuttings. Later, hand placement will help set the rock to ensure that it will withstand the force of high rushing water. The willow cuttings will grow up through the riprap, helping to further secure the new stream bank. The portion of the bank behind the riprap is often planted with fast-growing trees like poplars, or an extensive brush mattress is woven to help stabilize loose soil, retard runoff, and eventually provide shade for the stream and cover for the wildlife. Now that you've seen a few of the techniques implemented over the last decade, let's take a look at the success story in the making. We'll do this by looking at a few of the subbasins as they looked when the plan and site evaluations were first started. Those subbasins are Wheelbarrow Creek, String Creek, Little Creek, and Cave Creek. Contrast these before pictures with how they look today and see what can happen when a community of landowners, agencies, and private groups cooperate to develop and implement a coordinated resource management plan. Roads are the major source of man-caused sediment, especially road cut banks and inside drainage ditches. A relative cheap method to control erosion is to ensure that the road is adequately drained. In Cave Creek, proper location and the size of the culverts were the keys to success. Sediment was controlled and winter access for landowners maintained. This upper stretch in Wheelbarrow Creek was downcutting and gullying upstream. Gully headcuts result in the loss of prime agricultural soil, a lowering of the water table, and disruptions to proper grazing distribution. This is the same location one year after repair with a gabion grade control structure. The head cutting has halted, and access for steelhead and salmon has been restored. Once side slopes have been shaped to a more gentle grade and structures reinforce the channel bottom, a stable medium for future plant growth is provided. Ten years after repair, the structure is hardly noticeable as the long-term restoration solution, native vegetation, takes over. Willow growth, 
now over 20 feet high, provides shade to cool water temperatures for improved fishery habitat. If the watershed area above is being stabilized, stream bank erosion control of critical sites is important, as this 10-foot high bank devoid of vegetation illustrates. Stream bank treatments can be expensive, so emphasis was placed on bioengineering approaches. One example is a willow brush mattress that incorporates rock or wood structures with living plants. Some stream locations require some minimal structural stability to reduce velocities to levels tolerable for plant growth. Young willow sprouts trapped native alder seed to produce a tree canopy 15 feet tall in less than four years on the previously barren bank. Continuous gully networks can impact large portions of the upper watershed that are well above but drain towards salmon habitat streams. Large gullies sometimes require large treatments. Landowners funds were matched with funds from the California Department of Forestry and the Farm Services Agency to change an eroding gully into a stable channel. The check dam structures in Rock Tree Creek prevented thousands of tons of fine soil from being washed into important downstream spawning areas. But the real success came from the sediment deposits and channel gradient changes behind the structures. A much improved native plant medium was provided and revegetation occurred naturally in five years. If not properly designed, culvert outlets in spawning streams can be sites of major barriers to upstream salmon migration, such as this eight-foot drop on Little Creek. With installation of a fish ladder, a series of pools removed the barrier, opening up an additional mile and a half of spawning and rearing habitat upstream. Through a combination of these techniques, a variety of erosion problems can be treated. Over the uh, seven years that we've owned the place, we've used um, the, the latest one is the exclusionary fencing. We have riprap, large and the medium-sized riprap. We've used mattresses, and we've used the fill behind the riprap here, and the plantings of the willows, lots of that. We've had poplar plantings also. We've used the uh, check dams. We have quite a few of those farther down on the stream. Stream restoration is just marvelous here. You've just seen several good examples of some pretty serious watershed problems that faced the landowners of the Tomkai drainage. Leadership by the Mendocino County Resource Conservation District helped to start the healing process. With the work that's been done, the undercutting, downcutting of the stream has stopped. Already in seven or eight years, we can see the difference on the banks. The banks are beginning to stabilize. In some places, they've completely stabilized. Through a well-developed plan, cooperation of landowners, and by pooling both technical and financial resources, the Tomkai watershed restoration was a success. This has been extremely exciting and gratifying for both my husband and me to see the change in the landscape over the past six, seven years. It's been quite dramatic. It's, this was just a, uh, a flat, open, bare ground. Now it's blooming. It is hoped these efforts will inspire others to work together on their own watersheds as a project of community concern.